you see this uh, wipeout option basically what it does is it clears anything in this sheet so I click on that option wipeout and it tells me that this is going to wipe out the entire decision tree and I'll be having a clean sheet so I just say yes and you see it has del deleted everything it has cleared everything and now I have a blank sheet here so the first thing that you need to do to create a decision tree is to select a particular cell from where you want to start the node so let's say I select cell E20 so that's the cell where I want to start my first decision node so let's say we have a situation where we want to analyze whether we want to drill a well or we, we don't want to drill a well so if we drill a well then we may have let's say there is two possibilities the first possibility is that if we drill a well we do find some oil which is commercial and we can exploit it and make some money out of it let's say if we find a commercial commercially exploitable reserve then the value that we get is 100 million dollar the second possibility is if we find nothing and in that case we lose all the cost or all the expenditure that we have done on drilling the well let's say that expense is 50 million dollar so the second possibility is a negative 50 million dollar value the other option that we have is to do nothing and if we do nothing then we lose nothing therefore the value of that decision branch is zero so this is the situation that we want to draw so the first thing is to select the cell and click on add decision node now once you do that it will present you with the option and it, it, it basically asks you how many decision branches you are going to start with in our scenario we have two decision branches the first branch is a drill branch the second branch which represent our second option is to do nothing branch so we have two here and by default whenever you create a decision node it gives you two branches but you can override it uh, with two three four whatever in this example it's two so I'll keep it as two and click OK now you see it the cell which I selected was E20 and that is now converted into this green square which represents a decision node the value of that decision node at the moment is zero because I have not did anything here and it has two branches so I'm going to just override this and say my decision branch the top branch represents a drill scenario so I just say drill the bottom decision branch that represents do nothing case so I just say do nothing and I can also edit this node name so to edit the node name you need to select the node which is cell E20 the green cell and just type in there so I say this is the node name is let's say I just type in drill or not that's the decision node and it has got two branches or two options drill and don't drill or do nothing now at the end of these two branches it says me to add node so now if we go ahead with the drilling program and I already said there is two possibility if we go ahead with the drilling program so these two possibilities represented by a chance node so I need to select this cell and add a chance node there so I select add chance node which is a red circle now my chance node has got two possibilities so and by default it will present you with two but it can have four five six whatever the scenario is so I just let it be two and click OK now by default it has assigned 50% probability to the two chance branches if I had selected three then it would have assigned one third probability to each of the three branches and I can now edit these two probabilities so let's say if we drill then there is uh, let's say 70 percent chance that we find a commercial discovery and there's 30 percent chance that there's no discovery at all it's a dry hole so I give it a name dry hole and the top branch I call it uh, 
discovery now if we find some oil then the outcome of that in that scenario is let's say hundred million dollar so that is that node now is the outcome node so I'm just selecting that cell which has add node and going to press on this add outcome node so this outcome node is represented by this blue triangle and the gray cell is the final value of that branch so if we find some oil and if it's commercial the value of that discovery is 100 million and for the dry hole branch so in that scenario the outcome node value will be negative 50 basically we lose all the cost of exploration so minus 50 so we have completed this chance node this 100 million is the value of discovery minus 50 million is the value of dry hole now there's one more node here which we need to populate that is a do nothing case if we do nothing then the value of that branch is basically zero so we need to add a value zero here by pressing add outcome node so that value is zero and now our decision tree is complete I can added this node as well so I select this red circle which is a chance node and I call it uh, let's say just chance of discovery so 50% chance of this sorry 70% chance of discovery and 30% chance of not finding anything the value of, of this decision it is showing here as 55 and this 55 is basically a selection of the maximum value of the two branches the first branch which is the drill branch gives me 55 and the bottom branch gives me 0 so it has selected 55 which means by default when you build a decision tree it tries to optimize uh, maximize the value so it will basically check of the two decision branches which branch gives me the maximum value and it will take that value now this 55 is the result of the probability weighted average value of these two branches so 70 percent chance of 100 million and 30 percent chance of minus 50 and if you click in the cell this shows you the how the value is calculated now having drawn this decision tree we want to see which is the optimal decision branch whether we should go ahead with drill or we should do nothing now the default decision rule in this file is set to maximize the value so if we click on this button which says so optimal decision it's going to highlight this top branch in red color as that is a symbol of the optimal path so if we simply click on so optimal decision you see it has converted the top branch into red color branch which means this is the optimal decision path so according to the so if our decision rule is maximized then we should be going ahead with this drilling program however in certain situation we would like to minimize the value so if that's the case then our optimal decision path would be the bottom branch of do nothing and to do that all you need to do is to go on this under decision rule you have two options maximize and minimize so if we want to minimize the value then we simply click on minimize and you see the optimal path is no longer the top branch it's now the bottom branch so using this button of so optimal decision uh, you can visually see which is the optimal path and it's very useful if you have a very long and complicated decision tree this is a very simple example so it's you may not consider it that significant but can, but imagine a situation when you have a decision tree uh, spanning over the whole of the screen then it's quite useful another useful feature of this D tree is that it helps you to audit the probabilities now some of all the probabilities of all the branches of a given chance node must be 100% now here we have one chance node and the probabilities of the two branches are 70% and 30% and these two adds up to 100% but let's say I committed a mistake and instead of instead of having 30% as the chance of dry hole I inputted let's say 60% 
Now if I look here, I got 60% chance of dry hole and 70% chance of discovery. The total of 2 is 130% which cannot be true. But this is easy to spot in here but if you have a complicated and long decision tree you might miss on those input errors. So for that we have this inbuilt feature here of audit probabilities and it helps you to audit the conditional probabilities of all the chance nodes and it must add up to 100. So I click on this audit probabilities and now you see what it's saying is basically that the total conditional probability at the chance node C and underscore 17 underscore 9 which means the chance node at row number 17 and column number 9 which is I 17 is not 100%. Please update the chance probabilities. You click OK and then again click OK and therefore I need to correct these two chance probabilities. So if the chance of dry hole is 60% then the chance of discovery should be only 40%. In that case the chance node value here is 10 and if the value was to maximize this is still the optimal path. Let me change it back to 30% and this should be 70% and if I audit my probabilities again this is saying all conditional probabilities check. Okay, So these two are quite useful feature and with this you can minimize your error and create whatever complexities you have you, into your decision tree. There are a few more buttons here which I have not explained but I'll explain briefly like this undo last action. If you click on this button here undo last action then it's going to, to undo the last action. So let me see what was the last action that I did. When I said the undo the last action it means which was the last node that I created and it is going to delete that node. So if I click here undo last action it is saying that this delete the last node that was added in this decision tree. And this was the last node which I added. So let me add it back. And the value of that was zero, so I put it back to zero. So using this undo last action, if you have created a node which you think is not correct, then you can undo that. And there's another button here which is help. This button is a help button which explains the basic FAQs of these files and some fundamentals of the decision tree. So it starts with what is a decision tree and the structure of a decision tree and some basics about what is a decision node, what is a branch, what is a chance node, etc. And a small tutorial on how to create a simple decision tree.